Hey guys, uh, sorry this is late. I was doing loads of things today and then on top of that I was doing this and I had loads of te technical issues. I'm going to be responding to Samantha Lux. I was Samantha Lux has been on my radar for a while uh, and if you have seen my video responding to Jammy Dodger, which I will link now, uh, then you will know that I, I've kind of had... Uh, for a while I was like, well these people who, who aren't really like... They're not really making serious arguments with my position. I was like, well, I don't really see the point in responding to them. But I saw actually, no, they're, they're kind of... They're, they're a growing group of people who I used to think of as just kind of lifestyle YouTubers who are now actually beginning to argue for positions. And I figure it's worth having a conversation about that. Uh, I will say, uh, I guess there's a chance that Samantha Lux is watching this right now uh, because, you know, Samantha has responded to some other people who have... Uh, made stuff in relation to uh, the content. So with that said, uh, hello, if you're there, nice to meet you. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and have some fun watching it. So yeah, I'm just gonna start watching. I don't think there's anything else to cover. So let's press the button that causes things to play. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's Hello. video, we're going to be doing another reaction video. I know you guys love these videos and honestly, I love to make them. So she posted a video on non-binary people and how it's sexist and confusing. Girl, if you're confused. I must admit, I am, I am hopeful that uh, Samantha will respond to this because I want to know what the, like, will I be boy? Because I feel like I, I've seen Samantha do this with other people, well, women, be like, girl, girl, what are you saying? But to be honest, I'm not really sure she's actually down to learn. I think she's just, you know, trying to make that coin. Hmm, I... that doesn't make much sense, though, because uh, Ariella Scarcella began to make money off of, or, or get big off of, like, um, sex stuff, like things to do with sex. Uh... And since Scarcella has started to do more stuff on gender identity, I believe Scarcella's views have gone down significantly. So actually, it is it is too, it has been overall to the detriment of Scarcella's channel that she has spoken about gender critical uh, issues and, and gender identity issues. So uh, I I am a bit confused about where this logic, uh, how anyone could possibly be like, yeah, Scarcella. Like I think this accusation would be valid against almost anyone else except Ariel Scarcella. Like, it would be valid against me. I mean, it wouldn't be valid, but at least be convincing. Because I didn't get many views until I started talking about gender identity stuff. And now I talk about, like, I was for um, ages on this channel when I had, like, 250 subscribers. I was talking about all sorts of things. Like, uh, I didn't have one particular focus. And now I have the particular focus of gender identity, and my subscribers and my views have gone really high up. So there we go, Samantha. I, I hope you are planning on responding to this because you can make that criticism now. You can say, he's just doing it for the views. And it, it would be convincing. Uh, it would be, you would have some basis for that argument. It, it's not even inaccurate in a sense. It's kind of just like, it, it, insofar as YouTube is always a bit cynical because it is unescapably about the fact that you make content which you think is going to get views like that's and it's kind of like it insofar as youtube is a thing where because let's be honest i would not necessarily that there is content i could be making which i don't make because i know that content like this will get more views you know would i be making this if i didn't think it would get more views than some other video which i might be more interested in i even have had moments where i've, I've thought of videos i want to do and i've thought well i could make that video as its standalone thing or i can make it as a response video uh, like I can include it as part of a response video. And obviously I'm always going to include it as part of a response video because that's going to get more views. So, you know, obviously there is an aspect of you do the thing which you know is going to get more views. Uh, so insofar as YouTube is a thing where you don't necessarily do the thing you most authentically want to do, but rather you do something slightly different because you want to make money. Um, yeah, it's, it's a grift, I guess, but that's also just literally the definition of any kind of job. So whatever, it's, it's a weird, um, it's a weird attack. I post new videos here on my channel twice a week. So if you guys have not yet subscribed and you would like to, go I've ahead and subscribed. do that right now. Go ahead. I've done I'll it. Wait for you. I, I subscribed. Don't worry. Don't worry, Samantha. I did it. I subscribed. Are you done? And it was worth it because I saw this video earlier and I, I watched it in bed and I thought, yeah, I could, I could respond to this. 
uh, you know, and it was worth getting all, all the other videos that I wasn't particularly interested in in my subscription box because I got this. So I can 100% recommend uh, subscribing. And also I have a Patreon. So if you guys would like to donate to this channel, the link for that is down below as well. But I have a Patreon. I think that Samantha's just doing this to get that coin. Yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into today's video. So if you guys don't know who Ariel Scarcella is, she is a lesbian YouTuber who for a long time made very um, <laughs> interesting content. Okay, like I... <laughs> It's fine, I get it's a joke, but if you are a, a trans woman and you know that a, a lot of gender critical feminists uh, kind of are suspicious of trans women, it's probably not a good idea to act as if you are suspicious of, uh, confused by, and kind of grossed out at the prospect of lesbian sex. Like, it's, it's just a bit funny how Samantha just seems completely like, you know, she makes videos about lesbian sex. <laughs> I just that was a really funny reaction. Wait, let's watch it again. Who for a long time made very um, <laughs> interesting content. Her like it's it's fine, but it's just like, why would you act so uncomfortable at the prospect of like a, a channel that does sex positive lesbian content? It just it, it's not a good move when. It's, it's not good optics. Okay. Her biggest videos and the videos that kind of made her more popular are all videos about sex. I Wait. But you just said that Scarcella does the gender identity stuff in order to make the coin. But then you've also just said that the stuff that Scarcella does about the sex is the most positive of the videos. You contradicted yourself. That's like, I, imagine, I don't get that. That's like if, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Okay, I don't know, let's say uh, Cosmic Skeptic. You probably don't know the channel is Cosmic Skeptic. Cosmic Skeptic does stuff on atheism and also does stuff on veganism. It would be like if I said, Cosmic Skeptic only talks about atheism to get loads of money. And then literally less than a minute later, I said, Cosmic Skeptic's biggest videos are the videos on um, on veganism. That wouldn't make any sense. You go, well, hold on a minute. So why are you saying? And that's literally what Scarcella did. Oh, sorry, what uh, Samantha did. Scarcella makes two types of videos: videos on sex and videos on gender identity. And Samantha just said, within the space of one minute, simultaneously, that Scarcella makes gender identity content in order to get money, and then also said that Scarcella's videos on sex are the videos that bring in the most views. I don't get that. Okay. See, that's like, it's so taboo, but her videos are about like lesbian sex, like how to, you know, be with lesbians, stuff like that. She's trying- Again, seems really uncomfortable at the prospect of women having sex with each other. It's fine, but like, <laughs> it's just really funny <laughs> that like, ah, oh, that it's just, I guess it, it's just so typical. To imagine, like, if you had to imagine an idea of kind of the the prototypical um, gender critical idea of a trans woman, this would be it: dressing up like a woman, uh, trying to emulate a woman in every single possible way, and simultaneously seemingly <laughs> incredibly disturbed at the prospect of two women having sex with each other. Oh, great. Transitioned into more of a trans-centered content. Honestly, like every third video that she posts is something about trans people and how they're taking away women's rights and lesbians are all leaving her. Girl, I can see why, first of all, but. Oh, wow. Catty. I mean, that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't mind people having a personality and if part of that personality is insulting people, um, it, it can be. Uh, I don't, I mean, I I will say I insult, usually I insult dude bros. Like, that's the thing. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I make fun of people like Vorsch and well, mostly just Vorsch uh, because I think Vorsch is really funny. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the point is, like, I don't know. if I, I don't cover that many dude bros, but Vorsch is, like, the biggest, most obvious example. Destiny is, like, but I think I, I kind of respect Destiny on a level which I don't respect Vorsch on. But yeah, basically, I, I make fun of dude bros. And, you know, at the end of the day, do I think that 
it, it is an equivalence to making fun of Arios Garcella for being ugly, or I, I guess that's the implication. Like, I can see why. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe actually, what Samantha's trying to say is, well, lesbians are leaving you because you're a bigot. Maybe, maybe that's it. But I don't know the way the way that it's worded and like kind of the intonation of it makes it sound like, girl, you need to get some your 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 sexy on. I don't know. I I can't. I can't do the talking in that kind of way. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Uh, the point being that if you want to insult someone, fine. Uh, I don't personally think that Scarcella has done anything to warrant being insulted based on her looks. Uh, again, I'm kind of... It sounds like it's looks. Maybe, I guess, I, I want to be charitable. So let's... Okay, let's be charitable. Let's say that what's actually being said is that Scarcella is is being attacked for... Or, or being left by the lesbians for being such a bigot. Because let's be clear, if there's one thing lesbians hate, it's uh, people who aren't down with uh, Goldick. But the video that I'm going to be reacting to today is titled Non-Binary is Confusing at Best and Sexist at Worst. Now, that's a big claim to make. We're going to claim that an identity is sexist. So, I mean, I'm excited to show you guys. <laughs> um, I tell you what, I do hate the fact that with this, like, I'm not trying, but inevitably for most people, if you just pause on a random picture of them, it ends up being kind of unflattering. But don't. Don't take that. I'm not doing it on purpose. I haven't intentionally written down the most uh, awkward moments to pause to cause people to be doing goofy blurred faces. Um, I'm sure that if you paused on me, I'd probably be doing some kind of weird face. Uh, so, can you say somebody's gender identity, or sorry, identity, full stop, is is sexist? Or let's just say bigoted in general. Um, and certainly, I, I mean, it depends what you mean. Like... Uh, can an identity in itself be sexist? Well, identity is just a social construct. It's something that emerges from society's ideas about particular things that you can be. Things you can be, does that make sense? You, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so can can that be sexist? Or, or bigoted in general? Well, yes. Like, I, I mean, a good analogy I can think of, just off the top of my head, would be something like um, l race. So Latinos are considered a different race in America, even though Spanish people aren't considered a different race in Europe. And I would suspect that's because nobody is really racist against Spanish people in Europe, but people are racist against Hispanic people in the Americas. And because people are racist against Hispanic people in the Americas, there is an idea that Hispanic people are a different race. So in other words, and, and I mean, another really obvious example would be Jews. Like why the hell are Jews considered a different race when Italians, for example, and Greeks, who both look quite similar to Jews, are not considered different races. And the answer is anti-Semitism. Like, literally, there is one simple answer you ask, like, one question. Why aren't Jews considered white people? And there's actually one answer, and, and that answer is anti-Semitism. If it was not for anti-Semitism, nobody would think, like, just imagine you're, like, Ben Shapiro. Why is Ben Shapiro not considered a white person? by at least some people? The answer is because, well, he's Jewish and because anti-Semitism exists and has created an idea that Jews are a different race to white people. So there are plenty of identities which you could at least make the argument are, uh, like I say, bigoted in that their origins are in bigotry. Uh, and uh, if you want to just talk about gender, uh, you look at most, many cultures have had an idea of a third gender. And usually when you talk about third gender, they are always, I think always, sex segregated. So they do not cross sexual boundaries. Uh, and it's a way of making it so somebody who is a biological male can do things which are not associated with the uh, social role of men. So if you have a biological male and he is going to do something which would flaunt the sexist ideas about what men should do, then that is where the origin of these third genders have come from. So yeah, you could make an argument that those genders those third genders are intrinsically sexist. Of course, funnily enough, those third genders would be an example of being non-binary. So again, I would quibble the idea of even using the term gender uh, in that context. I think it's something which you can, which can be disputed, um, and I'm not going to get into it. But I think you know there could be a debate there. But insofar as let's say it's a gender, yeah, sure, those genders are literally sexist. Like those genders are sex segregated, uh, and based on the idea that there are certain things that men and women should do and that therefore if a male person a biological male does a certain thing that is that contravenes this idea of um 
oh god I, I really need to do a video on like third third genders in like the um uh parts uh, outside of europe uh in you know i was going to say the global south it's not just global south but um yeah it, it contravenes it then they invent this idea of a third gender which is the the funny thing is that it's it's obviously significantly not uh, non-binary as non-binary is often understood in contemporary queer theory because in, temp in contemporary queer theory they always say that non-binary means nothing non-binary just means a rejection of the binary and it doesn't have actually any clear meaning whereas if you asked a indian person what does i can't remember the names but i'm pretty sure it's called a hijra okay no bloody hell i'm gonna look it up i bet i'm right so if you ask an Indian person, what is a hijra, they're not going to say, well, it's just a nebulous concept defined by identity. No, they're going to specifically point to the roles that hijras do in that society. So yes, is that sexist? Yes, it is sexist when you are literally saying that you've invented a gender just to um, have an appropriate class of people to do particular roles in society. Uh, yeah, that's sexist. There we go. There's, there's literally no debate there. So there we go. Uh, can somebody's gender identity be sexist? Well, I can just think of one example of a non-binary gender identity in history, and it was literal sexism. It was a sex-segregated category designed to uh, limit the parameters of what was considered acceptable social behavior for somebody of a particular sex. So, boom. I win. I'm going to link a few people down below. They have awesome videos actually reacting to this specific video as well. Do you think I should watch them? Maybe I will. Maybe it will be a Patreon special. No, not really. I don't think I'm ever going to have content specifically for patrons because I'm too cool. Also, um, yeah. So being non-binary is a type of trans identity that does not conform or does not identify with either of the binaries. For me, I was born on one. Okay, that was, that was just misspeaking, but I do think it's funny. Either of the binaries. Um, obviously, there's, well, there's just one binary. There's not, it's not two different binaries. That's fine though. Like, it's just funny that, um, it's just misspeaking. Although it is kind of funny because many people have pointed out that in a, trying to reject the binary, the man-woman binary, they have uh, accidentally created another binary, the <clears throat> binary, non-binary binary. So maybe we're going to get non-binary, um, non-binary, binary people going forward who will reject the non-binary, binary, binary. Um, there we go. <laughs> Now, you might say that's, like, oh, mean or whatever, um, but honestly, when when you define non-binary in a way that doesn't really mean anything, uh, as Samantha has thus far done, uh, and I believe will continue to do, uh, y you can't then be surprised when this people then... It just becomes more and more elaborate, because there's never any sort of real clear uh, referent in actual reality. So you know, people inevitably, if you're saying, well, we have this idea of man and woman, which means nothing, because again, man and woman means nothing in this kind of queer theory, uh, postmodernist understanding of gender. And then you say uh, that people do not feel represented by this man-woman binary, which means nothing. Uh, then you say, well, now we're going to invent a new category called non-binary. And what does non-binary mean? Well, it means nothing. Again, it literally means nothing because man and woman means nothing. The binary means nothing. Non-binary means nothing. So what's to stop somebody else just saying, you know, I don't feel uh, like I am represented by this non-binary term. So I'm going to decide that I'm actually outside of the binary, non-binary, binary. There's, you know, that's the problem with not having words mean anything. For non-binary people, they feel most comfortable in the middle somewhere or, you know, on whatever plane. It doesn't have to be a spectrum. It can be like a multi-dimensional plane, however you envision yourself. Really, it doesn't really matter. But See, I mean, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, once you literally have no meaning, it's kind of just like, uh, I guess, poetic license in the most literal sense. You can just say, uh, actually, gender is a trans-dimensional hypercube. And it's like, yeah, sure, it can be. <laughs> like, you can just... Literally, it can mean anything. And then you have to think, well, what was, what is the point even in this word? <laughs> what is the point in man and woman and gender and binary and non-binary? If you can just say literally any series of descriptors for it, for, for your position in this, you know, um, uh, matrix, second dimension, fifth world billion sort of google power spectrum of hyper gender 
malarkeys. You know, there's just no limit to it. So I, I guess it means nothing. I guess that's it. If somebody walks up to you and says they're non-binary, or man or woman, as people would, you know, as um, somebody who believes in non-binary would, would have to affirm, it's just as if they've gone up to you and gone, Ehh! it means nothing. It's like, whether they describe it in like, I'm a pansexual polymorph, uh, who's also 53% wolfkin, but only on Wednesdays, uh, you know, they could say that, or they could just go, bleh, bleh, bleh. And it would have the exact same meaning because nothing they just said means anything. Brilliant. Love it. Um, yeah. But the main takeaway of a non-binary identity is that they don't identify with being a binary male, being a binary man, or being a binary female or a binary woman. It is important to bear in mind, and I need to remind you guys of this. I feel like you guys, you, you often fail to acknowledge this. And I need to point this out right now because you just keep damn forgetting it. Transgender activists have no, they, they don't deny the existence of biological sex. I can't believe you would think that, you idiots. Haven't you ever heard transgender people? How many times do transgender people and trans activists and whatever else have to come out and say that they do not deny the existence of biological sex? Oh, by the way, some people feel that um, male and female don't represent them. So, and they're right. So there we go. Just respect that. They exist somewhere in between, somewhere, you know, outside the somewhere binary, between. wherever. Again, that's just my interpretation of what non-binary means. Of course, it means different things for everybody. It's literally just, it's like an umbrella term. <laughs> it's a, an umbrella term. The thing is about an umbrella term, umbrella term still has a meaning. <laughs> like, I don't know, neoliberal is like an, or, or liberal in general is like an umbrella term. But the thing is, okay, liberal is an umbrella term. But if someone says they're a liberal, you still kind of know what they mean. It still has a meaning, but in this context, like non-binary, and I want to know, like, what is the point in not being non-binary? Because man doesn't mean anything, and woman doesn't mean anything, and then apparently there are people who don't feel represented by these words, <laughs> by these words that don't mean anything. So it's that point, like, what's the point in not just being anything? Just okay, fine, I'll, I'll be non-binary because apparently it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like what? I guess it means that people have to, you know, <laughs> when they say, hey, I like Michael, he's got really good content. I can go, they've got really good content. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's what it should be. Just like, just why can't you just express it in terms of the real world consequences? So just say, I'm a pronoun pedant. That's it. You're not non-binary. You're just somebody who likes to get annoyed at people using third person pronouns. Uh, uh yeah i just <laughs> it just doesn't, like it's it's an umbrella term <laughs> an umbrella term <laughs> for nothing <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything <laughs> so how is it an umbrella term <laughs> like an umbrella term is supposed to be like a useful term that helps you kind of like group lots of disparate things together but in its context i mean i guess it's disparate but it's disparate in like the most meaningless sense um oh goodness me okay let's go i do encourage you to go check out some of their non-binary creators and you know hear it from them but anyways let's get into this video it's brutal girl it's brutal well, I girl again i will reiterate i really i do want samantha to respond to this because i want to be called boy you know, like that. I want Samantha to go, boy, let me tell you something. Non-binary means loads. It means everything and nothing and everything in between, boy. I don't think that anyone in the non-binary community even can fully explain what non-binary is. It seems like it's this made up term that anybody can use for whatever reason they want. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Girl. Girl. That's not right. You know, actually, I guess the funny thing is that um, if, if I started doing that, it's like going a girl, it would be kind of woke of me because I would be acknowledging Samantha's um, declared gender. I'm like, girl, trans girl, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, no, yeah, I mean, let's just clarify. What Ariel Scossella said is pretty much exactly what I just said about like it not meaning anything, but let's... Um, Okay, I'm gonna stop it already. The first claim of the video is that non-binary isn't defined. It's this made-up thing that not even non-binary people can define. 
<laughs> I'm like, it's just so funny hearing somebody say something dismissively, which is so undeniably true. <laughs> Like, that's just so funny to me. Like, first kind of video is that non-binary is this made-up thing that nobody can define, and oh shit, that's right, oh god, what am I doing? I believe literally nothing, and everything that I hold dear is completely vacuous nonsense. The prefix non is not creating a new word, it's not creating a new definition, it's not creating anything like that. It's just indicating that that is not something that you are. So when we think about non-binary, it's just you are not binary. So when she says that non-binary hasn't been defined and it's not precisely defined, that's kind of the whole point. <laughs> that's a bit strange though, because you've... <laughs> I. Uh, but the thing is, so... Samantha just kind of went from saying like, oh, you're an idiot, because like as if the idea that it's not clearly defined is 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 not true, to then saying, yeah, it is true, but it's it's not true for a reason. Um, and OK, wait, let me watch that again. It's not, it's not creating a new word, it's not creating a new definition, it's not creating anything like that. It's just indicating that that is not something that you are. So right, but OK, here's I, I understand where this is coming from. And it, it seems almost smart. Uh, I will say it, it strikes me as immediately, um, immediately the suggestion is that saying you're not something is just automatically a reasonable thing. But but that's not true because sometimes you can literally not not be something. Uh, a good example I can think of is when people say like they don't have an accent. You ever like met someone who doesn't have an accent? And then like you, you think they're saying, like I said um, as a joke to Luke, I said, yeah, I don't have an accent. It's really good that I don't have an accent. And he uh, he took me at face value and he was like, um, wait, let me do his accent perfectly. Um, Mike, <laughs> I can't do that. Michael, you have, sorry, that's Brummy. Okay, I'm just gonna give him a Brummy accent. Luke has a Brummy accent now. Michael, you have a very distinct uh, Southern English accent. And yeah, basically there we go. That was, that was my impression, yeah, good. I mean, I had to give him an accent he literally doesn't have because I, I can't do his actual accent. But, you know, uh, we got there in the end. And and obviously, like, the thing is, you know, that is true. I do have a Southern English accent. Uh, and I was saying it was like a joke. Uh, and, you know, I could make fun of Luke for not getting that it was a joke. But to be fair, you know, like, it's kind of... I kind of understand why, because there are people who genuinely, unironically believe they don't have accents. Like, especially, I think it's a common thing amongst Americans in particular. Like, you'll get Americans who are like, yeah, I don't have an accent. And it's like, well, you, you do have an accent. <laughs> you do have an accent because you literally can't not have an accent. Like, you can't not have that thing. Uh, and it just suggests, like, a serious lack of self-awareness. Another good example would be the um, people who say they're non-denominational. Like, get people who are like, um, I mean, you probably don't get people because you're probably not um, interested in these kind of discussions. But, you know, like, the whole idea of being non-binary, and sorry, non-binary, non-denominational, and people will go like, um, yeah, I'm a, I, I'm non-denominational. Like, I don't actually believe in, like, Calvin or Luther or the Pope or anything. Um, I just, I just believe in what Jesus said, so I'm non-denominational. And again, the point is, you know, I, I think this is an analogy worth uh, stressing. Y you literally can't not have a denomination because inevitably, if you say, like, you just believe what Jesus taught, well, that's what every, like, that's what Catholics believe. That's what Baptists believe. That's what Reformed uh, Presbyterians believe. They, they all believe that they are following, you know, the true expression of the Christian faith, uh, and that's what makes them a denomination, the fact that they, they believe that's what their their view is. So for you to say that you're non-denominational doesn't make any sense. And it's why lots of people who kind of get annoyed with that will say, like, non-denominational is my favorite denomination. Because it literally is. Like, that's it. Um, there's also that really funny uh, X, XKCD. I've actually forgotten how it's uh, what order letters appear in, where it's like he's talking about conlangs. And he's like, oh man, there's too many disparate conlangs. We need to make a conlang that's going to bring unity. And then the joke is that there's just one more conlang. So that that's kind of it. Like this idea of saying like, you are going to be the person who doesn't have this thing or isn't part of this thing uh, is, is just nonsense. 
like you saying you don't have an accent or you don't have a, de- a denomination obviously i mean lots of people don't have a denomination if they're not christian but you know if, if you're a christian saying like, oh, i'm a non-denominational christian these terms mean nothing so immediately i'm, I'm skeptical of this idea that just saying well i'm non this thing automatically makes it a coherent definition because there's many examples where that's not the case again so saying like uh, I'm non-binary and just thinking, well, that automatically makes sense because there exists a binary uh, is is stupid and yeah, makes you sound as stupid as somebody saying they don't have an accent. Saying you're non-binary would almost make sense if uh, if the binary itself was clearly defined. The problem is with with non-binary people is that the binary isn't clearly defined because if you if you get someone to try and define the binary, I, I guess this would be the challenge. Okay, if someone says they're non-binary, don't ask them what non-binary means. Ask them what binary means and say, I want you to define binary in a way that is simultaneously coherent and actually means something while also not including you. And they're not going to be able to do it because either they're going to say that the binary is just who identifies themselves as a man or a woman and then you say, well, that's incoherent because it's circular. You're just saying that the binary by which people are defined is itself determined by people's definitions and how they define themselves. So that's incoherent. Or they'll say it's some kind of essence, like a man essence or a woman essence. And then you go, okay, well, yeah, that's not that's at least coherent, but there's no evidence for the existence of man essences or woman essences. Uh, or they'll say it's about gender roles and like, you know, well, if you do more man things, you're a man. If you do more woman things, you're a woman, in which case that's sexist. Um, or they'll have to define it by biology, in which case you'll say, well, that includes you. So there's literally no way around them uh, defining the binary in a way that makes any kind of sense. So yeah, sure. Assuming a logically defined binary, being non-binary could be a thing. The funny thing is, I'd argue the gender critical people have more of a basis to, like, at least the non-binary makes sense. Like, it's, like that's kind of the funny thing. Gender critical um, feminists or, or anybody who has a gender critical view when it comes to gender identity has a more coherent conception of a non-binary than, than people who actually believe in the non-binary. Because for me, you know, gender is defined by your biological sex and your biological sex is organized around different uh, gametes. So, and, you know, phenotypes. So, it, you know, we can, a, a, a conceptual non-binary could exist. So, so by that logic, you could say, well, a, a non-binary person is somebody who is so biologically distinct that they can't fall under either category in the binary. And that would actually be coherent, which is kind of funny. I guess it's just kind of funny that somebody who doesn't even believe in being non-binary can give a more coherent definition of being non-binary than somebody who does believe in that. If you go any further than that, it's purely up to interpretation because again, it's not creating a new category, like a new binary, like being a woman. You know what I'm saying? Like the thing that really bothers me about that claim is she goes on to say that like, Saying it's not creating another category like woman is is funny because, again, I would reiterate, uh, according to the logic of people who believe in being non-binary, being a woman doesn't even mean anything. So not only is it not creating a category, it's, it's fundamentally erasing a category. So there we go. Claim is she goes on to say that like, oh, not even non-binary people can explain what non-binary means. Girl, like Google it. There are po- What? That doesn't make any sense. Um, if if the point is that a definition of <laughs> if the point is that a definition of of non-binary is so elusive that not even people who subscribe to being non-binary can define it, then the whole point is that you can't Google it. Like this is like if I don't know, like um, there was a political movement called um, Blippy Bloppism, and I said. Blippy bloppism seems so confusing. Even the blippy bloppists I meet can't define it. And it's always, why don't you just Google it? It's like, well, the whole point is, how can I even Google it when literally the people I meet who subscribe to the thing I'm talking about don't actually know what it means? <laughs> like, it doesn't, I, I'm so confused. Surely the implication of the sentence, not even non-binary people can define it, is that not only has Arias Casella Googled it, but she's gone one beyond and actually actively gone out of her way to try and find non-binary people defining this concept and has found that there doesn't seem to be anything logical to it. I mean, let's be clear on the fact that I am four minutes into watching somebody who is not non-binary but claims to be sympathetic to non-binary people uh, explaining as best as uh, they can what it means to be non-binary and they don't seem to have a very clear definition of it at all. So... You know, it's 
There it is. Plenty of people that talk about what their identity means, how they experience being non-binary. That's just not true. I think. Um. So I I, I will say this, uh, Samantha. If you're watching, you are free to recommend, um, I like let's say five books. And they can be any books, they can be philosophical, they can be scientific, they can be um, anthologies, they can even be fiction, uh, that, that you believe, and you can consult anybody, you know, you can do a proper brainstorm, uh, that you believe help w would make it obvious what non-binary means. And we're not talking about Google here, we're talking about five books of any length you like that can explain it in the most detail possible. And, and if you, I mean, heck, if you just write a comment, you know, you don't have to respond to this video. If you just write a comment saying, these are the five books, and you can even throw some journal articles in there, I don't mind. These are, these are the things I want you to read, the resources I want you to consult. Maybe put in slightly more than five, because there's a good chance I may have read at least one of the five that you recommend, because, you know, I, I am well read on this subject. But just list any, any recommendations, and I will read them. I have read around on this topic loads and I have not been convinced. But if you if you genuinely think that there is some degree of like you can learn about this and it will uh, change somebody's mind on it, well, yeah, give me anything you, you think that I should read and I, I will learn about it and I will read it and, you know, in the space of probably a few weeks and we'll see. That is, that is what I'm saying right now. I'm giving you the opportunity to uh, make sure I am maximally informed on this topic, and I will come back to you and tell you whether or not I think this idea of being non-binary makes sense. I have realized, by the way, I'm kind of um, covering up her face, but if I go down here, it kind of looks like I am Ariel Scarcella. Seriously, though, I am kind of upset that I am covering up her face. Think that non-binary is actually a new woke way of saying androgynous, just like wielding a sort of wokeness <laughs> over the new term for validation purposes, for pronouns, for control. Literally 50 seconds into this video, she's claiming that being non-binary or identifying as non-binary is a way to control people. Um... Well, Affecting how people can use language and whether or not people can use language in an intuitive sense and forcing people to use language in a way that doesn't make sense to them based on the idea that they're a bigot if they don't is It's pretty controlling. Oh my god. She says that it's a new woke term meaning the same thing as androgynous First of all, that's just not accurate and it's just like so frustrating to me because she's diminishing an identity Okay, I guess that statement there just that's not accurate is this all that's gonna be said so I'm just gonna say that um it, what you need to realize is that similar to the whole biological sex thing, when you try and pin um, gender identity extremists down on like how they understand biological sex, they'll say, oh yeah, biological sex is definitely real. Like they'll say it's real. Uh, they'll admit it's real when pushed on on the topic. But the then then they'll say things which only make sense if they don't believe in biological sex. Like they'll talk about people not feeling like they, they are represented by the terms and the categories of male and female, which only makes sense if you don't believe in biological sex. When they're pushed on the specific issue, they may say one thing, but when they actually talk more generally about the topic, that's when they betray what they really believe. And I think it's a similar thing with this whole gender identity, gender expression thing. If you ask these people, do you think that it is actually expressing gender in a certain way that really makes somebody trans or non-binary, they will always say no. But when you actually look at the kind of ideas of what it means to be um, non-binary or to uh, be transgender, they will always give an indication actually deep down they think it is about gender expression. So, you know, yeah, I would say it seems like uh, it is. it is about people feeling androgynous and i think also that just makes sense because you look at how much you know like ground ground one ground floor the ground floor of feminist theory is that gender is a big thing that constantly impacts our life so it makes sense if you've been raised to believe there are certain ways men should behave and there are certain ways women should behave and then you feel that you you go beyond that that you might rather than challenging the idea that certain genders use certain things you might actually instead decide that you have become a different gender that you are a different gender because you're doing things uh, differently to how you have been told boys and girls should act. Um, so that's a very reasonable theory, which I don't think can just be dismissed with no. 
Non-binary people are non-binary no matter how they look. They can look like a typical cis woman, a typical cis man, and still be non-binary. They can conform to gender stereotypes and all that kind of stuff and still be non-binary. It's a matter of identification, not the way you express yourself. But See, again, this is this is the issue. Um, it's kind of a, it's the same issue. Basically, yeah, when they're pushing it, they'll say, yeah, sure, you can be non-binary and look any way you like. You can be non-binary. It's got nothing to do with expression. But actually, when you just look at reality, uh, you will see that it tends to be, it tends to be about expression uh, and how people present themselves um, to the world. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, in theory, they're always going to say, when pushing it, they're always going to say, well, it's about identity. But, I mean, first of all, identity doesn't mean anything. Uh, but... Let's continue. But then she takes it a step further and says that being non-binary is a way to control people. Controlling, overbearing, and just like, they're trying to make us change our language. They're trying to erase what it means to be a woman, which is not at all the case. No one has- Well, I was expecting slightly more to be said there. Um, the point is, it, it, if, if somebody believes very firmly that being a woman has a biological component, and then you say, no, it doesn't. I'm a woman and I'm completely biologically distinct from Ariel Scarsella, for example. Then, yeah, you are um, erasing what it means to be a woman and you are redefining the idea of woman and you are attacking the identities of the people who disagree with that. You are no less attacking somebody else's identity, uh, the identity of a gender critical woman uh, or, or me, for example, in saying that you think gender is not defined by biology as I am attacking your gender by saying I don't think gender is defined by identity. It's the same thing, so. You, wherever you fall on the gender spectrum, wherever you fall on the gender plane, that's completely up to you. So that's why people's interpretation of being non-binary is so different because it means something different to everybody. Um, okay, Samantha, I'm going to try to, I guess, make the central point for you uh, just to see if I can kind of get you to understand this. I don't want to sound um, snarky. I, I apologize. I just want to try and really help here. The, the issue is that any identity must have some kind of referent for its definition. And this is, this is true of literally anything. So if I say that I am white, then what I am saying is that I have physical, like, okay, what is the referent when I say I'm white? I'll give you a clue. It's my forehead. No, it's my skin color. That That's it. And of course, you could maybe make an argument, well, uh, are albinos uh, white? And then you say, well, there's a second aspect of it, which is that it's my genetic connection to the uh, more immediate inhabitants of, of Europe, although not quite as immediate as, you know, many immigrants to Europe who were born here. Uh, but yeah, that's the general idea. Like I am, why am I white? I am white because I have white skin and because all of my family going back, you know, to all of my great grandparents was born in the UK, in Europe, in a white country. Why is somebody black? Somebody is black because of one, their skin color and two, uh, again, because of their immediate connection to, generally, we'd say Africa, uh, you know, and their uh, direct connection to it. But of course, you know, there are complexities. Obviously, you can make an argument, well, are, are Australian Aborigines black? I'm not going to get into that. But the point is that there, there is a very obvious referent, and there can be complexities to that referent, but it, it's still there. And I think it's, you know, you don't even have to be right. You can be specula speculative. For example, maybe... Um, Maybe I've got a bit of Jew. Okay, we've already mentioned Jew. So let's say I've got a bit of Jew, on, Jew in me. Why? Well, you know, because I kind of got like thick, dark eyebrows. So, you know, lots of lots of Jews kind of have Mediterranean features. Or we could just say Mediterranean in general, it doesn't matter. Uh, the point being, even then, what am I saying? Am I saying, well, um, I'm, I, I think I might be Jewish because I've got a bit of a Jewish essence in me. Like I have kind of the Jewish, like I feel like I am uh, a Jew born in a white person's body. No, I, I wouldn't say that. What I'd say is um, that I have some uh, physical features that suggest Jewish heritage, let's say, and some kind of genetic connection to the people who have historically inhabited um, Palestine, 
and obviously there's some complexities about it also being uh, some of the uh, Ashkenazi Jews apparently coming from uh, Khazar, I believe is the thing, which I'm not going to get into. But that's basically the point. It's, it's a genetic thing. What about um, sexuality? Uh, if I say I am a straight man, what does that mean? It means I am attracted to women. There we go. That's it. Easy peasy. Like, there it is. So, so okay, what do you got? You've got my attraction. Well, that's a very clear, obvious reference. Uh, not only is it, um, you know, just immediately in my mind, you say, what is it? Well, that's my desire to with uh, women. Uh, but also it's going to tend to have a physical expression. So there we go. Uh, what if I said, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'm a bit bisexual. What does that mean? Well, it means, okay, well, part of that attraction is actually for men. Really simple. And again, obviously, with a gender critical view, which says that uh, gender is about biology, uh, man, man and woman is very clearly and obviously defined. Um, so, you know, it, it's pretty simple. And obviously, a gay person says, you know, or let's say a, a woman who's a lesbian, uh, she would say, well, I'm a lesbian because I am attracted to women. There is, it is very obvious what, what is happening here. And it even applies to like religion. You know, if a Muslim says, I am a Muslim, that to me does not mean I identify as a Muslim. What it means is uh, they are a Muslim because they have specific beliefs about theology, about philosophy, about metaphysics, about history, uh, which comes together to form their religious beliefs. And I, I would suspect if um, if you asked a gay person or a black person or a Muslim, what do you believe? Oh, sorry, what is your identity and to what are you referring when you identify yourself. Uh, I think they wouldn't really hesitate too long before being able to point out what it is that they're referring to when they when they say that they identify themselves this way. And thus, I, I'm curious why it is that apparently gender is the one exception here. Gender is the one thing which apparently has no referent. And I, I just want to stress the point, it has no referent if you are um, somebody who believes in kind of the ideas of gender identity extremism. Because the... The obvious example would be to say, well, your gender identity is the gender you identify as. Do I need to point out that circular? The point is, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean anything. It, it literally means bloody nothing, doesn't it? Um, because, you know, what what is the reference there? Your gender identity is the thing you identify as. Why do you identify as it? Again, note, if, if this is a black person saying they identify as black, there is not a hesitation before they can point out why they identify as black. They will literally point at their face. That's it. Um, if you ask a, a gay person, why do you identify as gay? They will presumably tell you about the many wonderful nights they spent um, enjoying the bodies of other men. It, it's, it's pretty simple. And yet uh, you, you get to gender and suddenly it's like, uh, why do you identify as a woman? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? Um, and then obviously you have okay. So let's say let's say okay, gender identity. That's a word. That's circular. So maybe it's some kind of woman essence or man essence. And either you have the woman essence or you have the man essence, or you don't have any kind of essence. In which case you are non-binary. Uh, well, first things first. If that's the case, I hate to break it to you, but I'm non-binary because I don't have a man essence. Um, uh, especially if that man's called Evan. That's a reference to a pretty bad band from the early 2000s for all you young kids. Um, and then, uh, so, so, you know, I don't have a man essence and I don't I don't have a woman essence. So I guess I'm non-binary. But then there's also the fact that I don't believe in, you know, I do believe in a spirituality, but I don't believe in a, a spirituality when it comes to gender. And I think a lot of my, my viewers who don't believe in any kind of spirituality at all would probably even more thoroughly reject the idea of a uh, ethereal, metaphysical, spiritual man or woman essence. So I guess, hey, all of my viewers, you are non-binary too, because you, you don't believe in that. So, okay, you know, maybe it's not that. Well, either that, okay, at that point, what is it? Is it, is it gender roles? Is it the things you do? Is it the way you present yourself? Well, no, because that's sexist and Samantha's already just said that's not what it's about. Uh, so what's left? There's a really obvious thing it could be. Your biology? Like that that would that would be a really obvious thing for it to be. Like because there's no issue there with it being biology. If that actually makes a lot of sense, like historically, 
and just in terms of the lived experiences of most human beings on the planet, uh, that it's biology. In fact, I, I find it profoundly ironic that um, queer theory activists will always talk about lived experience, even though uh, their understanding of gender is the most far removed from lived experience that I could ever imagine. That, that their idea of gender identity is about something which doesn't even exist in reality at all. Uh, so I, I really am not sure how on earth somebody could say lived experience. So yeah, I, I hope that's kind of clear, that basically you need to be referring to something. When you identify yourself as a woman, or you identify yourself as a man, or you identify yourself as non-binary, that's fine. All I would ask is one question, to what are you referring? Because you need to be referring to something other than your identity itself, because there is no other thing like that. I can't think of any other identity where the definition of that identity is so circular. So why is gender the one exception where it suddenly develops this incredibly circular meaning? I, I'm not sure. Secondly, most of the people I know or that I have seen that identify as non-binary. First of all, this is purely anecdotal. She literally just says straight out from what I've noticed, like, girl, I don't care what you've noticed. Okay. Um, I actually find it really funny how a lot of gender identity extremists and general trans activists will, will have this thing where they say like, um, hey, hey, you know, nobody cares about your, your studies or your theoretical stuff or anything else. All, all we want to know is, you know, just just speak to trans women, speak to non-binary uh, people, and then you will understand them. Just talk to them. Get to know some trans people. That, that's like a recurring thing. And, you know, show of hands, who's heard uh, a gender identity extremist say that? Hey, speak to a trans person. Just get to know a trans person. It's not hard. All you've got to do is, is listen to the lived experiences, haha, of trans people. Like I say, it's funny that they use the term lived experiences when their idea of gender is literally so far removed from the idea of a lived experience because it literally has no referent to natural reality. But, you know, they say, listen to the lived experience of trans people. And yet at the same time, when you then say, oh yeah, this is what I've observed from the trans and non-binary people I've spoken to and met and interacted with, they go, no one cares about your personal experience, which is literally what they do all the time. Like any time, it's so hypocritical. Any time that people's lived experience or interaction with trans people and non-binary people hurts the arguments of self-identity essentialists, gender identity extremists, they will say, well, listening to trans people is complete nonsense. But every other time when you write a comment, they'll say, why don't you listen to trans people and hear the things they're saying? And it's so stupid and hypocritical. Anyway, let's... Maybe if you took a second to step out of your gender critical movement and maybe like follow some actual non-binary people, like listen to what non-binary people are saying, then you would know that that is not the fucking case. <laughs> what? That was... I... So, uh, to clarify a point, I was just saying how, like, lots of these people in this movement will, will hypocritically say, hey, you know, when, when somebody talks about their, their experience talking to and engaging with um, non-binary and, and transgender people, um, uh, in a way that negatively affects the goals and uh, I ideals of gender identity extremists, they'll say, um, they'll say, hey, uh, you can't do that. That's that's wrong. Uh, you know, that's just anecdotal evidence. And then obviously they'll hypocritically turn around and say, well, maybe you change your mind if you spoke to trans ident uh, trans uh, gender people and uh, non-binary people. And I was saying, oh, isn't that hypocritical? That just happened, but within the space of about 10 seconds. Okay, let's just get that again, just for the record. Which you've noticed, maybe she literally just says straight out, like, from what I've noticed, like, girl, I don't care what you've noticed, maybe. Okay, so there we go. That's statement one right there. Statement one, it doesn't matter your individual experiences interacting with and um, engaging with trans and non-binary people. That's statement one. It doesn't matter what you've noticed engaging with these people. Now let's hear statement two. Maybe if you took a second to step out of your gender critical movement and maybe like follow some actual non-binary people, like listen to what non-binary people are saying, then you would know that that is not the fucking case. Statement two. <laughs> statement two. If you 
interacted with uh, and experienced transgender and non-binary people in your own personal life and listened to them, then you would change your mind. That is two completely contradictory statements within the space of 10 seconds. Uh, you, yeah, I, I can't, I can't. You know, I, it's kind of nice, I guess, to just have, like, somebody who, who can make a mistake like that. And still, you know, be be comfortable continuing the rest of the video. I don't know. I guess it's with all the evil in the world. It's nice to know there are some people out there who are so naive that they could genuinely say two brazenly contradictory statements and just power through it. Honestly, respect. Like I just can't. I can't be mad. Like if if this had been like somebody like I don't know, contrapoints or. Vorsch or Destiny who had said within the space of 10 seconds simultaneously your individual experiences with trans people and non-binary people doesn't matter and then literally 10 seconds later maybe if you had more experiences with transgender and non-binary people you would change your opinion and if, if they'd said that I would lose my shit but instead I'm just like wow <laughs> I, I mean, I guess that's the standard here. She goes on to say that being non-binary is purely political. Saying that somebody uh, being non-binary is political is... Ultimately, it makes sense when, when this idea of being non-binary is just an abstraction. And that's kind of the issue. Uh, because, and I'll say this again, being non-binary or any, any gender identity as defined by um, kind of this postmodernist queer theory idea of gender has no material referent, it can only ever exist as a theoretical abstraction. And as such, um, I, uh, I'm afraid I can't, I can't be on board with it as something that, is, uh, that makes any sense. And therefore, if it only exists as a, a theoretical abstraction, it, it makes sense people are going to say, well, what, is, what does this actually mean? Because it's clearly got nothing to do with real lived experience. Like, here's the thing, uh, you know, it comes back to the fact that it's not lived experience because it is just, there is nothing it's actually referring to in reality. So the logical conclusion is, well, if it's not lived experience, what is it? And the logical conclusion is, well, it's, it's something political. A lesbian was purely political and just erased all the struggles that you had to deal with, all of the actual internal feelings and, you know, everything that goes into being a lesbian. Like, it's not just... A political thing, it's who you are. This um, okay, so obviously, first of all, political lesbianism is a thing, but we'll ignore that because that doesn't really matter. Um, the point being that being a lesbian is already a thing that's clearly defined. So even if you did say that being a lesbian was a political thing, it wouldn't discount what being a lesbian also is, which is being attracted to and somebody who presumably has sex with women who is also themselves a woman. Uh, that's what being a lesbian is. I think it's it's funny because I suspect that because non-binary doesn't have any kind of meaning, the idea of somebody suggesting an alternative meaning is uniquely threatening to non-binary people. Because think about it, I don't think lesbians would care if you said that being a lesbian is a political thing, because I think lesbians would say, well, you know, even if it is, it's still also got its regular definition of being a woman who has sex with women or is, is sexually attracted to women. Uh, the reason why non-binary people get upset when you say being non-binary is a political thing is because non-binary has no other definition. So to literally impose any definition would be to impose a sole definition, you know, a, a, a definition to the exclusion of anything else, which is, is not the case of lesbianism. You know, lesbianism always has its definition because lesbianism has a very secure, intuitive, logical definition. Um, being non-binary does not. It's something that a lot of LGBT people face. People like you, Ariel Scarcella, lesbians that have come before you have demanded respect and earned that respect for you now. Demanding. Okay, a few things. One, uh, I think the language of saying that lesbians earned respect is a bit unfortunate because obviously respect isn't something you earn. It's something you're just entitled to, basic human dignity. But that's fine. It's just a words. Wait, there was something said earlier on. Let me just go back and find it.
who you are. The same is true for being non-binary. It's just who you are. It's not a fuck you to anybody. Demanding respect for being who you are is something that a lot of LGBT people face. People like you, Ariel Scarcella. Lesbians that have come before you. Yeah, okay, so... Um, it, I remember what it was. The thing about saying, like, demanding respect for who you are is that lesbians have a very clear idea of who they are. You ask a lesbian, what are you? What are you? When you say you're a lesbian, what does that mean? And immediately... It means I am attracted to women. I am a woman and I am attracted to women. Women. Uh, simple. You, you say that to a non-binary person. So the non-binary person says, I demand you respect me for who I am. And then you say, okay, what? who are you? And they go, uh, um, hyper gender spectrum plane of the ethereal um, magic land. And you go, oh, okay. That doesn't make much sense. And then they go, hey, I told you to respect me for who I am. But that's the thing, like, you can't not have a clear definition of who you are and then demand people respect you for who you are. It doesn't really work. So, yeah, whatever. Um, and then yeah, you have was, demanded uh, respect and earn that respect for you um, now. Respect. Demanding respect and that fight for respect does not take a... So, yeah, basically... Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, lesbians fought for respect based on the things they were doing that people knew they were doing, having having sex with women uh, and, and getting married to women and being in love with women and all that kind of stuff. So this this idea that lesbians, um, that there are some equivalents here just doesn't make any sense. Lesbians did a thing and people objected to that thing and then lesbians fought for their right to do that thing. Non-binary people aren't fighting for any rights because they don't actually have a clear definition of what it is they even are. So what rights could they possibly be fighting for? The right to have people say, yes, you are that thing, which you have not explained to me what it is that you are, but you are that thing anyway. Now, demanding respect and that fight for respect does not take away from your identity or does not make your identity any less valid. It simply means that they're less accepted and that they have to work harder to be who they are and be accepted by society. And you are Okay, that was, that was clearly, that sentence, that was grammatically confused. Um, I think, I think what Samantha just said is that the fight for respect makes people have to fight to have their identity acknowledged and makes them less valid. Let's just check that again. And that lesbians that have come before you have demanded respect and earn that respect for you now. Demanding respect and that fight for respect is Demanding that respect and that fight for respect. Not take away from your identity or does not make your identity any less valid. It simply means that they're... Demanding that respect and fighting for that respect. Less accepted means... and that they have to work harder to be who they are and be accepted by society. And you are... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what was happening there with the editing because that sentence implies that demanding respect and fighting for respect makes people's identities less valid, which is is a weird sentence or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's fine. That's just a weird editing thing. Um, I guess the main point trying to be made here is that um, people fighting for their identity doesn't make someone else's identity less valid. Well, it does because, again, if you define your, if you say you're a woman and to you a woman just means identity, and I disagree with that, and I say I don't think being a woman is about identity, you would probably say that I am uh, undermining your identity. But if I say being a man is biological and you say I don't that you don't think being a man is biological, then by the exact same logic you will be undermining my identity. So you are not doing them any favors. The title of your video is non-binary is confusing, blah blah blah. Figure it out. That's not our problem. You don't have to make a video on your YouTube channel calling them sexist for being who they are. I'm again, it's like so weird to hear somebody just repeatedly say who they are when are oh, again, like I guess that's the real takeaway here. If you have an identity there needs to be a clear referent for that in the real world. Because otherwise, who you are means nothing. I think it, it's kind of gaslighting to have a movement which, or, or a kind of ideology where you have this, you, you so kind of self-aggrandizingly, like just, just obtusely and almost proudly have, has no meaning. Just, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, gender doesn't mean anything. Uh, Non-binary doesn't mean anything. And then you simultaneously turn around and go, hey, you idiot, stop making a video about how you don't understand what, what our words mean that we made up that mean nothing. I'm getting heated. I just, 
It just makes me so mad when people make videos like this because they don't understand something. I don't understand plenty of things. I don't understand trigonometry and I'm not making videos about how it's sexist and you know, fucking discriminatory against people that don't understand it. Like, girl. Um, again, that girl. I do love it. Girl? Uh, yeah, like, the issue is, you know, I don't understand it. I, I, I guess... Here's the thing, it's important to understand that I don't understand something can have different meanings. And a lot of the time, saying, I'm going to move this around slightly, saying I don't understand something doesn't just mean I don't understand that thing. It means I don't understand it, and I suspect it doesn't really mean anything. Um, so, so saying, it's kind of, I guess, naively acting as if I don't understand this thing means just, just that on its own in isolation. What it really means is I don't understand this thing and this thing needs to be explained. Uh, so th there we go. Yeah, I I hope that's that's clear. I hope that's you now understand what I don't understand means. It doesn't just mean hey guys, just to let you know, just to say this out into the ether. I don't understand this thing. No, it means I don't understand this thing. Now please, can somebody explain this thing to me in a way that makes sense? Um, because yeah, all I would argue not just all my videos, but I would argue all videos that really argue a point should, if they're being kind of honest and open to the idea that they could be wrong, must be saying in some sense, I don't understand this thing. Like if, if you make a video on, I don't know, like how um, the Bible condones slavery, let's say, then inevitably you are therefore saying, I don't understand how somebody can read the Bible and not say that it condemns, uh, condones slavery. So then you're asking somebody to correct you. So if I say um, that I don't understand non-binary, uh, the idea of non-binary gender, then I'm saying that I don't understand how somebody can look at non-binary gender and how it can make sense to them. And I'm asking to be corrected. That's what kind of really being open to being corrected is all about, saying you don't understand something, admitting you don't understand something, and expecting people to uh, kind of explain that to you and help you understand it rather than just... Uh, attacking you for not understanding. Come on. Which is funny because you're actually telling people and telling the world that you are taking yourself out of a box by putting yourself in another box. She just had to include a little, like, what's funny? Again, maybe she doesn't. Oh no, I don't think that Samantha's gonna like this video because I laugh a lot at things that are not funny at all. Um, okay, let's see what the answer is. I don't understand is. like how words work or something, but Okay. Okay. I want to know where this is going, Buster. Like, that's fine if you don't understand. Like, I can I can explain it to you if you really want. Really? Okay, I'm so ready I for this. I have to say it again because she just doesn't get it. The prefix non is not creating a new category, a new word, a new anything. It's just saying that they are not binary. And these binaries already exist. We're not creating a new binary or a new something like that. We're just saying, oh, I, I don't identify as either of these existing binaries. Um, again... The, the binary might exist, but the point is, it, again, how, how can you define the binary in a way that, like, how are you defining the categories of man and woman uh, in order to understand the binary and, and explain the binary? Because for me, like I can say, I have a pretty clear definition of what the binary is, and I could offer a coherent definition of what it would mean to be non-binary. I'm just wondering how you can do that. Uh, so yeah, it, it would be... That's kind of the issue. You can't just say that you're not this thing because, well, what about the thing that, you, you know, you have to define the thing that you're not, first of all, and you've not really been able to do that. So whatever, let's just... Even though you can't technically transition to another sex, but visually, secondary sex characteristics trying to appear as the sex they feel more comfortable as. Okay, first of all, you 100% can transition to the opposite sex, like, hi, bitch. I don't... Hey, hey guys, I just need to remind you of something because I heard lots of you are stupid, ignorant turfs and you don't know that actually no transgender people deny biological sex. You, what do you think you are? Oh God, you're so stupid. All transgender people acknowledge the existence of, of biological sex. I mean, you know, one time I met this stupid, stupid little turf and they were saying some bullshit about how transgender people, transgender activists, gender identity extremists don't admit that biological sex is a thing. Well, let me tell you, Buster, we do. Also, um, you can transition 
to the opposite biological sex um, because biological sex isn't about phenotypes or chromosomes or genitals or anything like that. It's um, or gonads. It's about looking like, well, like that, apparently. That's, I mean, look, what is, what is Samantha, I, I guess, okay, so here's the funny thing. I, I often get comments saying like, <laughs> you don't know the difference between sex and gender, um, even though, like, it's just a really stupid comment, I get it all the time, and I'm not even going to get into it, but... I don't think Samantha understands the difference between sex and gender in that Samantha, I think what Samantha is saying here, I, I don't know, wait, I, I have no idea what's, <laughs> okay, let me, let me scratch that. I have no idea what Samantha is saying here. Samantha is either understanding what sex is and claiming that they have genuinely changed to the female phenotype. Or Samantha is saying that sex is purely defined by secondary sexual characteristics and arguing that their body is uh, in keeping with those secondary sexual characteristics and that that means that Samantha is now a female. Or Samantha is saying, I'm going to move to talking in second person. So either, right, Samantha, either you are saying, yeah, that it's, it's, you've actually transitioned to having a female phenotype or being a female phenotype, uh, or you're saying that you have a female secondary sexual characteristics and that makes you a female, uh, which would be a bold move if that was the case, because that would be, you know, talk about biological essentialism, uh, or you are thinking that sex is the same thing as gender and that sex is being a man or a woman. And that you're saying that you have um, transitioned to be a woman, which is fine, except... But vision more comfortable as... Okay, first of all, you 100% can transition to the opposite sex, like, hi, bitch. I don't... Okay, I, I guess, you know, fine. So is that it? Is it, like, I just wanted to check. I wanted to make sure that there was nothing else I was missing there. Um, I, I guess it has to be that you think that biological sex is the same thing as gender and that um being a a woman means identifying as a woman which is you know i disagree with that but i just want to understand that that's what you're saying because that is not how anybody would define sex although it does make it kind of funny when people say that uh trans activists do not deny the existence of biological sex when you consider the possibility that maybe for them, biological sex just means what you identify as. I don't know if it was a legitimate question or if she's just like trying to be funny or just like trying to like make a funny point and then be like, ha, gotcha. She's like- That's cute. Like, is being non-binary different than being a, a transsexual as she refers to us? Short answer, like, yes, they're different. <laughs> One is binary. Okay, I just need to point this out. Um, transsexual as opposed to transgender, it is a distinction. My understanding is that transsexual refers to somebody who has actually gone through uh, sex reassignment surgery, which again, you can't transition to a different sex, but whatever. Transgender is just somebody who identifies as a different gender. So that they're, they're different terms that mean different things. I do think lots of, I think there's like a whole thing where the term transsexual is considered problematic by some people. And you know, that's because like, you just can't have words when you're dealing with gender identity essentialists. Any word is inevitably going to become problematic after a long enough time. All right. One is not. Non-binary simply means just the way that somebody feels or acts. Isn't everybody inherently non-binary? You know? That's what I said. Oh, Samantha thinks it's funny. Um, like, that's fine. You know, I... I think I, as, as a naturally very nice person, I, I will admit I am partial to just watching people enjoy themselves. Like, I enjoy watching people be happy, and I'm happy that Samantha is having a, a, a gay old time uh, laughing at this. So, whatever. But I will say that I did make this exact same point myself. Like, if, if non-binary means nothing, which it seems to mean, then, like, surely... 
in some sense, isn't everyone, if, if a word means nothing, then isn't everybody that thing? Because if it doesn't mean anything, then how can you meaningfully say somebody isn't that thing? Like, non-binary means nothing, so how can you meaningfully say I'm not bi non-binary? I'm just going to pause real quick. We're not even going to talk about it. Sex is not binary. There are so many, so many, so many, so many academic studies and, like, legitimate, like, scientific proof that sex is not binary. And she Look, this is... I'm glad uh, Samantha's not getting into it because I think it's something where it is... It, it is a debate, and I will admit that. There is a coherent position um, for the idea that sex is binary. In fact, I would argue there are actually two coherent positions for the idea that sex is binary. Um, I, I think it's legitimate to say that sex doesn't need to be anchored to one specific thing in order to be binary. Uh, but I would also say, and this is the significant point, that... Um, sex can be anchored to phenotype and that that is binary so it, it's a debate like it's not something where you can go oh there's loads of proof that it's not um i will say that like i i enjoy watching debates between people who believe sex is a spectrum versus people who believe sex is binary mostly because there are legitimate arguments for both sides so there we go i guess i'm just kind of being a lame centrist here but uh, yeah, I... like obviously Samantha is not going to know us. Like I'm not expecting Samantha to kind of suddenly bust out some really compelling understanding of biology and, and stuff like that and like the relationship between phenotypes and gametes and all that kind of stuff. But whatever. She just is like, well, obviously sex is binary, like gametes. Duh. Okay. See, the thing is, I will say like, I think saying like, obviously sex is binary is is equally wrong because even if we agree sex is binary i'd say it's not obvious that sex is binary because i think the differences of sexual development could e easily lead to people thinking that sex is bimodal uh, which would be different so yeah like i wouldn't say it's obvious sex is a binary so i guess i'm on samantha's side here but then samantha simultaneously said the opposite that it's obvious sex isn't a binary by saying that there were loads of studies that disproved this idea so I guess you're both wrong. And she's like, well, if they experience gender dysphoria, then I guess they're valid. Like, why? I hate this whole trans medicalist standpoint. I got a video coming out on trans medicalism soon. Don't worry. But the thing is, gender dysphoria would be um, an actual point of reference for defining gender. And the funny thing is, I don't know, like, it's, it's just a weird situation. Like, uh, it, why, why do these gender identity extremists hate the idea so much of gender identity actually being defined by something logical. You know, and the thing is, I would say this, I don't think that gender dysphoria is a valid reason to define gender, but at least it is a reference. There's then the second much bigger question of, well, um, is it a valid reference for, uh, for defining somebody's gender? But at least it is a reference if your argument is, well, gender is the thing that makes you feel um happy and and when you're a and if you feel like when you're called a woman that makes you unhappy then that means you're a man and blah 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 at least there's some logic there but apparently you can't even say that gender dysphoria is a, is a relevant factor so whatever. some non-binary people just like transsexual transsexual people you know transsexual people some of them experience gender dysphoria some of them don't period. But my whole issue with these medicalists and all these kind of things is like, why are people's identities only valid through the existence of pain? Like, I totally understand that most trans people do experience gender dysphoria because it is very distressing having your... Yeah, I mean, I would actually agree. This is why, I, I mean, yeah, I'm agreeing with Samantha here. We stand, Sam. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that's kind of one of my issues with this idea of um, gender dysphoria being a way of defining gender identity like i'm not i'm not a man because i'm happy being a man i could feel really fucking shit about being a man and i would still be a man so yeah i just i just don't agree with this idea that like gender bends to our will which is you know i mean i know that's not the point samantha is going to make but yeah like i don't agree with this idea of dysphoria having anything to do with gender identity so yeah, I can just kind of just watch Samantha make whatever point needs to be made. 
while not necessarily agreeing with it. Internal sense of gender and your body not align. But if somebody can figure it out without feeling distress, why are you going to penalize them for that? As far as the law goes, I think that would be very tricky. I think it's incre becoming increasingly difficult to figure out how to treat non-binary people in the world because a lot of things are sex segregated or gender segregated. Okay, and not my problem. <laughs> she goes, uh, she's like... Wait, what? <laughs> but, uh, not my problem. But hold on a minute. Okay, so it, lots of things are sex segregated. So that is, there at least needs to be a solution there. You can make the argument, well, non-binary people can choose which, you know, whether they want to be in, in the boys' PE class or the girls' PE class. I believe Americans call it gym. You know, you could say that, and that would be a response. But to say it's not to your problem, what does that mean? Because it's... What what Sarskella is saying here, let's just take... Sorry, Scarcella. I don't know why I keep calling her Sarskella. Um, what... Uh, it's probably because I'm thinking of the hit underground uh, grime rapper, Saskala. Um, but basically, the, what, what Scarcella is saying here is that there are gender segregated spaces and where would um, non-binary people fit in those gender segregated places? So let's just say, I mean, obvious example, yeah, when I was at school, there was the boys PE class and the girls PE class. Why? Well... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, nowadays it's completely irrelevant because apparently anybody can identify as whatever they want. But the reason back in the day, you know, in the age old um, time of uh, yesteryear in, in, you know, the 2000s, um, the reason was because if if you were a boy and you were playing, you know, rugby, you, you wouldn't be playing against a girl. Like we played rugby and the boys didn't play against the girls when playing rugby for pretty obvious reasons. Uh, so let's just take that as, as an analogy. So, you know, I'm I'm there in, in secondary school and okay, there's a kid there who's non-binary. What, what PE class is that person in? That's, that's it, that's the question. I don't know how you can say, not my problem. Well, yeah, technically it's not your problem, but does that get rid of the, the question? Okay, I wanna see where this is going. It's incredibly difficult because of like, you know, there's only boys bathrooms and girls bathrooms. So what are we supposed to do with non-binary people? <laughs> like we know, we know it's an issue. That's why we're like. Okay. So I think just when Samantha said, not my problem, that was just like. Wrong. Promoting gender neutral bathrooms and stuff like that. As I just said. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Um, but all right, that's gender neutral bathrooms. What about sports? Um, duh. Like, I, I don't... I mean, look, at the end of the day, the whole gender-neutral bathroom thing, lots of people pointed out in the other video that there are lots of reasons to want um, sex-segregated um, bathrooms. I... I mean, what I said in the original video... Oh, the original video. The video that I made, the last video I made, I think, um, was basically that I, I thought there were technical issues with maintaining the integrity of sex segregated spaces uh, because of the fact that it's not immediately obvious who is or is not a man or a woman. Um, that was my point and that therefore that's why it's a complicated issue. So I, I never actually said that there wasn't a reason why you might want sex segregated um, bathrooms or restrooms or whatever. Um, I just said that I think there are lots of reasons why it could be a difficult thing to actually maintain, but you know, whatever, it's fine. Like I, I get it. And I did appreciate the people kind of pointing out because there was still like, I'm not saying like I considered every single thing everyone wrote. No, people wrote loads of really interesting stuff. And I did appreciate that. But I'm just saying like, it wasn't as if I was thinking like, there's no reason to have sex segregated bathrooms. My point was there are reasons, but you know, there are also issues with having sex segregated bathrooms when, um, you know, there are plenty of, women uh, biological females who might look a lot like men there are lots of biological males who might look like women and you know that's a question isn't it um so that's that's fine whatever but uh, sports is is a really obvious example and that was my go-to thought like i'm thinking about like a non-binary kid what what does a non-binary kid do for pe do they do 
what does a non-binary kid do at the Olympics? Do they go in the women's thing or the thingy thing? Like, that's the thing. You can't just completely have everything be sex neutral because sex isn't neutral. It exists. Something as simple as not fitting gender stereotypes. I actually think that is an incredibly sexist idea. There it is. There's there's the money spot. The sexist. She she had to throw it in there. Notice how it was so clear. She didn't back it up at all. She's like, if it's just to do with this, then it's sexist. Cuts to the next clip. Uh, that's funny because I'm pretty sure I felt that several times about things Sam has said, where I was expecting a a response and then it was just oh like a elaboration. That was just a jump cut. I mean, to be fair, like what uh, Scarcella just said there was completely reasonable. Uh, Scarcella said, if it's just uh, about gender roles and, and kind of gender stereotypes, then to say that you are non-binary is sexist. And that's actually a legitimate point. So really what Samantha should be doing right now is saying, yeah, that's true. That would be a good point. But that's not the case. It's not about um, gender roles and uh, gender stereotypes. That would be the appropriate way to handle this. Do you really think it's sexist or is that just like your buzzword? Is that your your word for clicks? If you just take the time to get to know some non-binary people or even just talk to somebody that's educated on these identities, you would realize that it's not about stereotypes, that it's not about how you dress. It is so, so, so much deeper than that. You said it yourself. Wait, what do you mean deeper though? Like deeper, I, I don't get like the use of, to, to say it's deeper because it sounds like it actually means much less. It means something way less meaningful. I, I don't understand where what deeper means here because it sounds not very deep at all. It sounds like it's just your... Um, well, it sounds like, like I say, it doesn't actually relate to anything real. So I'm not really sure what the deal is. So. Everybody has masculine and feminine traits. So if it was purely about traits or purely about how you wanted to dress, then we wouldn't be seeing people dealing with all the hardships that non-binary people face. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like a point. Um, the, the every single person would be non-binary if... Um, uh, yeah, every single person would be non-binary if it was consistent. But the argument is that it's not consistent which is a pretty common uh, criticism against these uh, ideas of gender identity extremism. Uh, and yeah, regarding the idea that like, non-binary people face discrimination, it's important to bear in mind that non-binary means so, so little at this point that you can barely even talk about non-binary discrimination because like, it means nothing. Like non-binary could just mean anything. Uh, so when you're dealing with a group that diverse, how can you even say there's such a thing as like discrimination that they face as a collective group? Critical people throw around the word sexist and misogynistic like all the time. Literally every video, every tweet that I see from them is like, well, you're sexist then. This is like an MRA responding to Anita Sarkeesian or like any kind of feminist. This is like a Sargon or Cat video. Why do... I don't know why I'm giving... I'm giving Sargon like a weird American accent. Uh, see, I would give him a different accent, but I'm aware that my accent is identical to Sargon of Akkad, and I don't appreciate that comparison. So I will, uh, no, it's like, why, why do gender, uh, why do feminists always make everything about sexism and misogyny? I don't, uh, I think it's very stupid of them. That's basically what this, this Samantha's saying right now. You're, you're a sexist girl. <laughs> Calm down. Girl. Girl. <laughs> girl. I'm not trying to laugh at sexism. I'm really not like sexism is real. Misogyny is real. But sweetie, that's not what this is. Why does being non-binary mean the um, erasure of female characteristics? Let me explain. I'm going to let you explain, sweetie. Don't worry. That's their only point is that trans people are. I'm going to let you explain, sweetie. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, it almost seems like misogyny. Hurting women. Almost every single female person female born person that calls themselves non-binary. Already like this phrasing, like you can just tell that she's like, so you call yourself non-binary? Well, yeah, if somebody disagrees conceptually with the idea of being non-binary, that would probably be the term they use. Oh, like, you know what I mean? Like they don't call themselves oh. non-binary, they are non-binary. Oh, you call yourself a lesbian? You choose to like women? Um. Yeah, the difference is, like, call yourself a lesbian. I don't think anyone denies that lesbians exist, though. That's the thing. Because there's no... Because, like, how could you even? 
Like, how could you deny lesbians exist? That's literally what she's saying. Either goes on HRT, testosterone, or at least gets a, you know, gets a double mastectomy, top surgery. When people who are born male identify as non-binary, usually only just change their gender expression. This is the stupidest argument I've ever heard. I'm just gonna say it. So she's saying that why- Okay. I, I think, like, I get the impression a lot of these people, um, like Samantha, don't like kind of nuance and uh, they're, they're very afraid of, and I think this is a, a real concern, they're very afraid of spitballing. Like, apart from anything else, I think it's very legitimate for somebody to theorize that maybe uh, non-binary, the idea of being non-binary tends to result in, like says, the erasure of, of women's sexual characteristics while it doesn't do so for men. That is a perfectly reasonable thing for somebody to theorize, and then they can theorize about why that's the case. And yeah, sure, there is then an onus on that person to actually go out and demonstrate this in any kind of convincing way. But uh, yeah, overall, there's definitely no issue with um, with yeah saying saying this this thing uh, with with presenting that as like holy shit, I've been doing this for too long. <laughs> with presenting uh, that idea as like a, a theory to to suggest. So yeah, there we go. Um, but but I think like as soon as somebody says something, they're like. The response is just confusion, like, oh, somebody's having an intelligent uh, kind of discussion where they're trying to actually analyze the world through an understanding of gender and sex. I've got to immediately shut this down by saying it's stupid. Why do only non-binary people that were assigned female at birth? <laughs> Let's just live in this girl's fantasy world for a hot minute and say that there is data that proves that it is only people that are assigned female at birth that are getting surgeries and hormones that are non-binary. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Just maybe it's because of all these standards and expectations that are put onto female-bodied people. And also there's the financial aspect to it. All right, yeah, that's, but that's the whole, the whole point. Like, that's an interesting thing to talk about. And if you're gonna talk about that, then it's perfectly worthwhile to criticize the relationship between um, patriarchal expectations placed upon women and this category of people being non-binary. And to point out how actually, perhaps the the idea of non-binary um could serve to obfuscate the reality that uh women are still subject to patriarchal uh, misogynistic standards in a way that men are not uh and that therefore to say that the either of these two people are, are non-binary either women or men are non-binary as opposed to being women or men is 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 nonsense and actually serves to um harm the credibility and, and the capacity for feminists to engage in serious uh, analysis and activism. Is the presence of breasts much more obvious as a gender marker than the absence of them? Yes, girl, yes. A flat chest is not a sex characteristic. Breasts, that is a sex characteristic. Ugh, girl, I don't even know what else to say. A flat chest is not a sex characteristic. It's just not. Older gender so here, Samantha is demonstrating an inability to understand the fact that Something can be a secondary sexual characteristic, even when not all women have it. Because I assume Samantha's logic here is that some women have flat chests, therefore, not all. Uh, sorry, therefore, having a flat chest is not a sexual uh, is not a sexual characteristic. Uh, that that's the best understanding I can get. But by that logic, you would have to conclude that being tall is not a sexual characteristic. Uh, and you'd also have to conclude, by the way, that having a beard is not a sexual characteristic because some women have beards. Um, you know, that like basically Samantha doesn't understand what um, secondary sexual characteristics are. Uh, it, it is possible for some women to have male secondary sex sexual characteristics and some men to have female sexual ca uh, secondary characteristics. And um, therefore, yes, having a flat chest is a male sexual characteristic and having um pronounced breasts is a female sexual characteristic even though not all women will have uh sexual sorry uh, pronounced breasts in a in a similar sense to how uh having a beard is a male sexual characteristic even though not all men will have uh, a beard and or some women will have a beard. 
So there we go. Yeah, easy. Generations, trans men adopted a variety of masculine looks that fit their personality and often worked to reach an I Waffen? I like I like the accent. Well, that's the end of the video. Uh, I just um I just recorded a different end and I was so tired that I ended up ranting for ages. Let's just say that's the video, it's over, it's done. Um thank you for watching and like and subscribe uh and enjoy everything that happened uh, in the world and just you know to do all that kind of stuff and yeah um good goodbye uh and thank you for watching and i hope that you have a very good lent thank you to my current patrons hannah kirsten stephen nancy rubble lizzie jessica constant adriana harper alex lyka jane george katie ryan vishnuvia snap feminist your father warned you about lily emily frederico a evan philip anna sophie jamie pasta lena julie dustin rashmi marion bj581 joshua you're all very appreciated thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in thursday's video bye guys Look at this nonsense I watch. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.